What's up guys, I'm Nobody Special, and you may have noticed that oil has had a pretty good start to 2022, up a percent and a half today, back into the high 70s and threatening to retake that $80 level. And right now prices are almost back to where they were before that massive $10 a barrel sell-off we had on Black Friday when that new variant was announced. Seems that big energy sell-off was a little bit overdone after all, wasn't it? Ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jack Gamble and I'm nobody special. And back on November 30th, I made this video about how the sell-off in energy markets was just so ridiculously overdone after Black Friday. We had that $10 a barrel sell-off in oil markets. Natural gas was going down with it. Seems like the world was acting like everything was going to grind to a halt on the news of this new variant. And in that video, I had mentioned that I bought some March call options in XLE, which is an ETF that tracks a wide array of oil stocks. Well, don't look now, but oil is almost right back to where it was. Now, before we get into the numbers, I have to ask, could you please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. It really helps me out. It helps me to keep this channel growing and I'd be forever in your debt. Now it is that wonderful time when we shrink my big fat melon of a head. And let's take a look at these oil markets. Now here we are looking at a chart of WTI crude trading right now at about 77.19. And this is a chart that goes all the way back to mid-November. You'll see back here, here is that big, brutal Black Friday sell-off the sell-off that lasted for another day or so after that. And then on November 30th is when I made that video saying that the sell-off was overdone and that I had done something that I rarely ever do. I had tried to catch a falling knife. Well, I did cut myself a little bit because, you see, we fell a little bit further from there, but not too far from the bottom was my entry there. And here we are now. We traded sideways for a while, and we are off to the races, having a good start to this year. And looking horizontally here, we're only a few cents below where we started when the news of this new variant came out. Now, getting into some of the news of today, this is in Reuters. Dated today, oil rises 1% as OPEC Plus agrees to planned output increase. Oil prices rose 1% on Tuesday as OPEC Plus producers agreed to stick with their planned increase for February based on indications that the Omicron variant would have only a mild impact on demand. If you remember all the big sell-off that we saw on Black Friday, everybody was worried that travel restrictions were going to come back and we were going to see negative crude prices again like we saw in 2020. Far from it. Demand has actually kept up. We haven't seen hardly any reduction in consumption. We've actually seen some bigger than expected drawdowns in crude oil inventories here in the States. So it seems like that big sell-off was totally misguided. And that is why I referred to it as the oil variant at the time, although the YouTube algo certainly did not appreciate my language on the subject. Reading off from this article, Brent crude was up 79 cents or 1.1% at 79.80 a barrel by 11.20 a.m. Eastern time. And US WTI crude rose 67 cents or 0.9% to 76.75. We've come up quite a bit since this article was written. Global benchmark Brent had earlier in the day surpassed $80 a barrel, its highest since November. The oil market is bullish today as a result of optimism sourced from today's monthly OPEC Plus meeting, which is helping oil prices trade higher, said Reistad Energy's head of oil markets, Bjornar Tunghagen. I hope I said that right. Apologies to my Norwegian friends. OPEC Plus, comprising the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and Allies, namely Russia, has agreed to stick to its planned 400,000 barrel per day in oil output increases in February because it expects the Omicron variant to have short-lived impact on demand. Now, while they're talking about another 400,000 barrel per day increase in production, it's important to note that oil production right now is still well below where we were before this unfortunate health incident began. And when they talk about these production increases, they're talking about just returning to previous levels. And there has been some stories in the news lately that shows that may not be so easily done because a lot of these countries are having difficulty increasing their output like they say they're going to. And I saw this article today, Russia may be nearing the limit of oil output capacity. Bloomberg December oil and condensate output together totaled 10.903 million barrels per day. Russia to fall short of its target of returning to pre-pandemic levels of oil production by May this year. And reading off from the article here, Russia may be nearing the limit of its oil production capacity, according to recent media reports. Bloomberg reported that the country's December oil and condensate output together totaled 10.903 million barrels per day which was flat on November, suggesting it was using up all of its available production capacity. 
The report notes it assumes a flat production of condensates, which were included in Russia's total oil output, which would mean that crude oil output alone was 37,000 barrels per day below Russia's OPEC plus quota for December. So while they are talking about increasing production, they are not increasing production as much as they're saying they're going to, which would indicate that they may be struggling to bring some of those wells back online, whether it's supply chain, labor shortages, who knows what might be driving that. Now, starting tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we get the U.S. EIA oil inventory report. And the last three reports, these are weekly reports that come out, have come in with a larger than expected drawdown in oil inventories. So even though the big worry when this new variant came out was that oil consumption was going to be affected, it hasn't really panned out. As a matter of fact, oil consumption has kept up and the consumption has actually been a little bit higher than most of these estimates. So we will see what that information comes in. That is at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Now, I would also add that you still have a lot of geopolitical risk going on in energy markets. Certainly the situation in Eastern Europe, if that were to light off, that would have a big impact on oil prices that would send them higher. You've also got the situation in the Middle East. There are nuclear talks going on with Iran right now. If those talks were to make progress and Iran were to have sanctions lifted, that would result in new Iranian supply hitting the market, which would drive prices lower. However, if those talks were to break down and tensions in the Middle East escalate, it's possible things could deteriorate further in the Strait of Hormuz, where a quarter of the world's oil supply flows through every day, that would send oil prices much higher. So you have a lot of these geopolitical risks still involved in the energy markets, and any one of those could have a big effect on prices. But at least for the time being, it seems like the market is adequately supplied, although not oversupplied. And with this big price plunge that we saw in November, it seemed like there was a lot of demand destruction was priced into those markets, and that demand destruction never materialized, so I think prices could still be heading higher. Now, this is an important part here where I have to see why my A and say I'm not a financial advisor, do your own research, your own DD, arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. Now, with that said, back in November, I had mentioned that I bought this ETF XLE, which is the energy sector spider ETF. Now, this invests in a basket of oil stocks. Now, about half of the holdings in this ETF are in Chevron and ExxonMobil, and the other half is a mix of exploration and production stocks like ConocoPhillips. Now, this one traded sideways for most of December after I bought the calls, but you can see they have come absolutely rip-roaring out of the gates to start the year, and we are right now right at this resistance level here where we have topped out before. If we break through this level and above, then it looks like we're off to the races to make some new highs in this one. So as of right now, I'm up about 53% on these calls. I still have them all. I have not begun taking profits, but if we go much higher from here, I'll probably start to unwind that position. Again, these calls are good until March, so I'm in no hurry there. And also, I would point out that I think what we have going on here, not just oil prices recovering, but I think we may be seeing a little bit of portfolio rebalancing. I think with the start of the new year, I think we've got a lot of people are shifting their strategies, and we could be seeing sell-offs and some of these high-flying, high-multiple tech stocks into more value-oriented and commodity-oriented names namely food and energy stocks. Those are just my thoughts. You guys let me know in the comments what you think is going on here. So long story short, the market was priced for absolute Armageddon when this new variant was announced on Black Friday. And while case counts have exploded, these cases have been very mild and it hasn't resulted in the demand destruction that they were counting on. And therefore, this big sell-off in oil that we saw in November was totally unwarranted and prices are starting to correct. We're almost back to where they were now. And with geopolitical tensions and some of these OPEC member countries having difficulty bringing new production capacity online, it seems like higher prices could be here for a while and could even be heading higher. Guys, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. And until next time, live small and dream big.